So most times when God wanted to get a, a message to a people and to a nation in a particular time in a dispensation, he raised prophets. He used the voice of prophets, praise God, to, I would use the word to promote or to propagate a message to that people in that particular time, in that season, in that particular dispensation. And so in the book of Haggai, praise God, in chapter 2, he's speaking through the prophet, but he's speaking in such a way um, that he's asking a question. And he said, who is still left around that I've seen the house in its first glory? And then he asks, how are you seeing it now? Is it not in comparison as nothing? And so God is speaking and he's asking, where's my glory? Or do you remember, uh, do you have any reflection of when uh, my glory used to appear in the house of the Lord? And you will see it manifesting in such a way that there were no questions as to whether or not it was my presence or not. That is the dilemma right now of the church. That is the dilemma that we're facing in the world, where the world is asking to see the manifestation of the glory of God, of the presence of God. I believe with all my heart, beloved, that now more than ever before, in Romans 8, he talks about the, the manifestation of the sons of God, that the whole earth is waiting and groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. So it is time to seek the face of God. It's time to pray. Like more than ever before, it's time for the church to come back to prayer, to the altars of prayer, to the time of intercession, to the time of the breaking away from, from the busyness and the affairs of life and this world. And to bow yourself in an altar, to bow yourself upon the altars of prayer, seeking God, seeking him for his presence, not for things, not for what he can give us, not for materialism, not for just God, I need this, I need you to pay my bills, I need you to, no, we're seeking him because we want his presence. And that's what I hear the Lord saying. He said to that prophet, hey guy, he says, listen, all the gold is mine. All the silver is mine. But then he says, the glory of the latter house, it shall become greater than that of the former house, which means there is something that we can tap into. And that is now, amen, that God is willing Praise God to release upon his children, upon the bride, upon you and I and anyone that will take time to come into his presence. What is called, amen, the glory of the latter house. Praise God. So this is that day as we're preparing to close one year, go into a new year. Beloved, hear me today. I know that you may have personal needs in your life. There are things that you're probably asking God to do. Well, ask him more than ever before. Praise God to reveal his presence and to reveal his glory. When we go through these corridors of dying to self, dying to the flesh, dying to the pleasures of this world, then we are positioning ourselves for deliverance. We are positioning ourselves for spiritual renewal and restoration. When that begins to happen, praise God. Amen. I believe the greatest revival, the greatest revival that the world has ever seen will begin to take place in our personal lives, in our our churches in our communities and yet still in our nations then we will see the glory of the latter house the glory praise god the outpouring hallelujah the glory of the presence of god the manifested presence of god the unveiling the revealing of who god really is it will become so clear to us so today that's what i'm praying for that's what I'm believing for with you. Praise God that you will begin to press in like that. Press into prayer. Press in to the presence of God. The tangible. That's what the glory we're looking for. Not just some sham or some, some, uh, some make-believe thing. No, we want to see it in this realness, in the reality of it. God's glory, his manifested presence. So I pray that for you today. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, those 
be that I'm born again. This and this will be your pursuit. Praise God that you will you will come to the altars of prayer. Praise God and that you will begin to learn of God, learn of the things of the Spirit, and then you will begin to feel and experience. Praise God, the manifested glory of God. I want to pray for you right now, beloved. I just feel that in my spirit to pray for you, and I want to pray that that your hunger for God will become increased, that your desire, your appetite for Him will become, amen, amen, increased. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up my, my sons and my daughters, my spiritual children. I lift up all, all of everyone across the nations today. Lord, let there be a revival in their soul. Let there be a revival for you and for your presence more than for this world and the things of this world. Whatever they're passing through, let it be lifted from them. Whatever they're struggling with and what's struggling with their people, let it be broken away from their lives and let there be a run to the altars of prayer. I give you all the glory today and I give you honor that they are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless all of you. We want you to come and be with us here, Apostle Knowledge and myself here at BFO MI Global. Praise God. We're in South Florida. Amen. Our address is amen. Right on our website. You can go to BFO MI Global, believersfaith.com. Praise God. Come be with us. We're right here in South Florida. We're like about probably 10, 15 minutes away from the airport. And I mean, we would love to have you with us this week. Our, our, our prayer services are powerful. Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Friday like our revival services where we pray and lay hands and deliver and set the captive free and Sunday mornings is back to the altar. You don't want to miss it. Come be with us. Amen. God wants to bless you and he's pouring out his glory upon the church in this hour and churches everywhere are experiencing this power of God. So be encouraged. Be blessed. I love you. I'm praying for you. In Jesus name. God bless you.